Hey guys, I'm Rebecca and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I made my Halloween themed dress for this year's Halloween 2020. Before I start, it is worth noting that anything I do on an overlocker or a serger in this video can also be replicated with a zigzag stitch or a pair of pinking shears. The fabric I'm using is a printed cotton from Spotlight's Halloween range, and I'm just making sure to pre-wash and iron the fabric before I start cutting. So here's a few shots of me cutting out my pattern. It is a pattern that I made, but I know that there are a few patterns made by commercial companies that are very, very similar in design. I've also just used a hot iron and a pressing cloth to fuse the neckline facings with a medium weight fusible interfacing. I use the one from Semco, it just gives the neckline more structure and support. I always like to assemble my facings first, so just pinning the shoulder seams together with right sides facing and sewing them. All seam allowances on this pattern are one and a half centimetres, except for the neckline, which is half a centimetre. I then press those seams open flat and ran the lower edge of the facing through my overlocker to finish. And here's what I ended up with, a finished facing with the seams pressed nice and flat and the bottom edge finished off. Next I moved on to sewing all the bodice darts. There are two on the back and four on the front. I went over exactly how I like to mark and sew my darts in my last video, and I did these the same way. I connected and pinned the notches and the drill holes, being sure to remember that the end of the dart is 1.5 centimeters past the drill hole. I don't usually mark my darts in, I just go by eye, but the fabric was difficult to see, so I just went in and drew in the darts lightly with a graphite pencil. After sewing, I gave the darts a good press, pressing the bust darts down and the waist darts out. Moving on to the shoulder seams, just sewing these the same way I did on the facing, but this time I'm overlocking them and then pressing them towards the back bodice. getting the sleeves ready to set in, just facing the sleeves and the bodice right sides together and pinning all the way around, making sure that the front and back notches and the shoulder seams are all meeting up the way they should.
when you're sewing pretty much any sleeve, you'll probably encounter some easing that might make it difficult to fit the curved sleeve head into the flat armhole. I just go slow, stop sewing and lift the press of it, gently working the ease underneath the foot, but being careful not to create any tucks. After sewing, I'm just overlocking that seam to prevent fraying and pressing it away from the bodice. Once that's all done on both sides, I've now got a bodice front, back and sleeves that are all connected. Next it was time to flip the back over to the front so that they're facing one another and pin straight down the side seam, making sure the underarm seams were matching up. After sewing, this seam was also run through the overlocker, just being careful around that underarm corner and then pressing it toward the back. Moving on to the skirt, I've pinned the backs to the front at the side seams and I'm just sewing all the way down, overlocking and then pressing toward the back. Next up, it was time to attach the bodice and the skirt together at the waist, making sure the fabric is sitting with right sides facing, matching up the centre fronts, backs and side seams carefully. Pinning and sewing all the way around, this seam was overlocked and then pressed upwards away from the skirt.
just preparing the center back seam to insert the zipper. I've overlocked the center back edges of the dress and then marked the end of the zipper with a pin. Just closing up the bottom of that seam with a 2cm seam allowance before pressing it open. Using an invisible or hidden zipper on the dress, so I just installed that using an invisible zip foot on my machine, making sure to sew as close to the teeth coils as possible. To attach the neckline facing, I'm using the same method I used to attach the lining in my last video, which I'll link in the description. After trimming away the seam allowance on the facing center back, I lined up the edge with my zipper tape and stitched it down. Then I flipped the facing and bodice so that they were right sides together, making sure to have the zipper tape extending from the facing side and the bodice wrapping around the teeth. I pinned the entire neckline and then sewed this with a 0.5cm seam allowance, finishing off with a quick understitch. An understitch tacks the seam allowance to the facing and helps it to sit nice and flat and prevent flipping. When this was done, I turned everything right sides out and pressed the facing down. I also added a small hand stitch to the facing, tacking it down to the bodice seam allowance at the shoulder seam. To gather up the sleeves, I pinned and sewed the sleeve hem by turning it up once by a centimetre, then up again and stitching close to the edge. left a 2cm opening in line with the shoulder seam, being sure to backstitch on either side. To feed the ribbon through the casing, I attached a safety pin to one end and used the pin to coax it through the sleeve casing. It was all pulled through, I gathered the sleeves up and finished the ends of the ribbon by cutting and singeing carefully. To finish the dress, I did a simple double turned hem to finish off the skirt, gently guiding and easing the machine foot over any bulky areas like the side seams. Lastly, to embellish the dress, I picked up these plastic spiders from my local craft store. 
To make them easily detachable for laundering purposes, I flipped the spider over, filled the hollow back with hot glue, and inserted a small open safety pin. Make sure to do this when the pin is open, otherwise you'll glue it shut. I topped off the hot glue, making sure the pin was covered, and added them to the dryer. Another alive like this. Start everything all over again.